Welcome in Slump Busters, it's your host Juju Talk Sports, joined by C Money, and it is time for Cobra Kai, episode six, season one, Quiver, and this episode, I guess, can really be summarized by flipping the script. Really great character development episode, we get an introduction into a character, um, I guess you can all be started by someone giving a little bit of a lip to Sensei Lawrence, <laughs> what'd you say, C Money? Yep, definitely give him a lot of lip. <laughs> so I, um, I really like that you touch upon um, flipping the script because this episode just like flips the script on not just the episode but the whole show and this then the whole premise. The thing that um, that really like caught my attention with uh, this episode is um, so throughout the whole show they use old old footage of the original Karate Kid. But this one, I felt like they did it so well. Like, it was very, very good how they did it. Um, of course, the beginning of the episode, um, we see a young Lawrence going to the Cobra Kai dojo, and he looks in, and it's and it's the old footage from the Karate Kid. But they, they did it, they edited it so well that, like, the color correction matched the lighting. Um, the footage was so good that I like at parts I thought it was new footage I thought they just got actors of the same height and the same hairline same hair and just reshot it but it's it's the old footage well I mean they definitely have done a good job of like you said men meshing the two worlds together to try and bring the old into the new and I think the the reason they did a lot of the flashback sequences obviously is to kind of make a point that yeah. Johnny wasn't always the rich, popular, successful kid. He wasn't always liked by everyone. And the karate was his escape. And that kind of is applicable now that he has a new dojo full of students, super excited following Miguel's big fight in episode five. Mm -hmm. we, we open up to pretty much a full dojo and Johnny's just going around basically going full Michael Scott with it, like, boom, roasted. After <laughs> each one, like, lip, tits, whatever he's calling them, saying, hey, you look like a virgin just by looking at you. And uh, it's like a point to say that, yes, like karate kind of made me, Cobra Kai made me better than I was when I first joined it. And I, I think that's really cool. Well, character development stuff we're talking about for this episode. Um, obviously, we finally get our huge introduction to the one, the only, Hawk. Welcome into the series, Hawk, because... Uh, you know, Eli, Eli's fun. Eli's okay. But Hawk, I'm telling you, now this guy, he really brings the series together. He does way more for the series than Dimitri. We get another neurotic Dimitri talk during this uh, one. Um, I heard of Dimitri, dude. Yeah, <laughs> when he goes into the one. What was it like? Oh, you know, I got beat up and yelled at. I was basically his hooker. It's like, dude, <laughs> you joined a karate class. You didn't expect to get punched once. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I tell you, Dimitri kind of, you know, ugh. either way, either way, we'll rip on Dimitri plenty of other episodes. If this is one of those series on YouTube where people love to hate on Dimitri, then hit that like button like all the time for us. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So the other big parts of this episode was a good Robbie episode too. Robbie uh, kept getting some uh, pranks thrown on him by our good friend, Louie, uh, so uh, did you know that they have to rotate the cars in the showroom from time to time? I, I didn't know that one. What, did, what, I, had, I, I had no idea. Um, <laughs> and, and I didn't know that it was like a huge cardinal sin to turn on the car inside the building. I had no idea that that was like a huge deal. I mean, it makes sense. It would freak you out. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind the you almost died sales event that he was talking about. <laughs> uh, but you, you do see a great moment in there. Obviously, there was the moment where Robbie was ready to straight up punch Daniel. And he was like, yeah, hey, if you're going to punch your boss, you want to at least have your fist right. You don't want to break your thumb. And that, that kind of led into a little bit of moments between them because Daniel spent the first part of the episode trying to convince everyone and their mother, including the mother of his children, to join him in the karate dojo. 
And we were, of course, learned that his uh, kid was a little accidente, which uh, yeah, <laughs> which uh, makes a lot of sense because I, I swear, God help me if I ever have, have a kid that spoiled. But neither here nor there. Anyway, great moments between him and Robbie in this episode. Um, I will say I'll give it to Louie too on the uh, monthly sales uh, hustler <laughs> that he managed to slip in. That was uh, between the two pranks. I, I think that one earned my most respect. Got him twice. Boom. But that, that's on Robbie though. It's like, dude, of course, like the dude's going to prank you once. Of course, he's going to do it again. Oh, there was a good moment too when uh, Louie's cleaning up the coffee station. He's throwing out the stevia and it just made me have Breaking Bad recall there because I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I don't blame you for throwing out the Stevie uh, after that one. Um, yeah, then what's what's so funny is that uh, uh, from time to time I'll drink Stevia, and I I think it's pretty good, but it's mainly used as like if you don't want to use sweet and low, it's mm-hmm. considered like the the healthier sugar. I'm a pink packets guy. I will go <laughs> with the sweet and low. I don't care. You know, it t- tastes well. <laughs> I, I, just a little cancer, just a little bit of cancer from it. <laughs> and, and no big deal, neither here nor there. It makes the coffee taste fine. <laughs> okay, well, I, I think that pretty much sums up the episode. Again, flipping the script, big part of it. Per, a lot of character development, some fun moments between Louie and Robbie. But uh, final grade, where do you give it? Um, I give it a, uh, I give it a home run because the character development is really, really up there th- with this episode. I feel like when you watch Cobra Kai throughout the first season, each episode just gets progressively and progressively better. What, okay. what would you give it? I'm going to say it has warning track power for me. It's not quite a home run. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I think the next episode we're going to talk about might be on that tier. I don't want to give too much away. I mean, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on it, Slump Busters, <laughs> you can, of course, you know, like, comment, and subscribe, and then view the next video for that grade. But, um, yeah, I mean... I will say, obviously, as a four, because you get to see Hawk debut, so it's pretty yeah. radical. Pretty dude. All right. Well, uh, anyway. uh, let me just say, the Hawk, the Hawk reveal is so 80s. So much 80s cheese in that one moment. The Mohawk, and then, and then like, I don't know, it, it, it's just like, dang, dude, you went from being made fun of, and you just, like, you're just like, nah, screw that. I'm not going to be made fun of anymore. And you get a haircut and then you have Johnny. Johnny's like, oh, okay, now that's badass. Especially since it's the Mohawk. That's that's the thing. Like The Mohawk is the ultimate 80s hairstyle just in yeah. general. But <laughs> all right, Slump Busters. Well, we have plenty great more Hawk moments to discuss. Plenty more moments from Cobra Kai to discuss as we lead into season three. As I mentioned, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.